Hi, and welcome to this uh, talk on uh, what will be the beer game. Now, the beer game is fairly famous in um, supply chain circles, but it's an extremely good uh, game with which to learn about second order effects and the difficulty of controlling second and third order effects in any system. Now, second order effects are the effects of effects. Now, if you do, if you, you cause an action, it will have an effect in any system. Now, that effect becomes a cause of other effects in itself. So, you take an action, it has an effect. That effect becomes a cause when it does something. And that cause has some other effects, and so on. I mean, you don't, it's, it's rare, if at all, you ever, in any system, uh, take some action it has an effect and there is no consequence, there's no flow on from it. So invariably we're dealing with the consequences of our actions and the consequences of that and the consequence of that and so on down. Like a, like a ripple in a, in a lake, you know. It goes on all the time. Now, uh, so far most of us are pretty good at understanding direct cause and effect. We do something, it has an effect, we expected that, we can deal with that, um, and that's fine but we have a great deal of trouble uh, understanding and treating the second and third order effects of things. And to, to demonstrate that, all we need to do is think about, uh, for example, climate change. Uh, we burn fossil fuel, this puts um, more CO2 in the atmosphere, puts more heat out there, uh, and the, the climate gradually changes. Okay, well, possibly we could understand that, that direct effect. But the indirect effects, like the changing weather patterns or shifting uh, pests further north or south as the climate changes, or coral bleaching or some other kind of effect, we have a great deal more difficulty understanding that. It's, it's an indirect consequence. Now we have um, possibly much more easily understood um, second order effects in uh, pest control. We, we understand this more because uh, we've been aware of it for much longer. Um, typically, what, what happens when we spray a crop for uh, insect pests is we destroy uh, most, but not all, of the pests, but we also destroy their predators because their predators tend to be of the same variety. Now, without predators, the pests recover usually faster than the predators. So we finish up with more, press, more pests, less predators, and a worse problem than we started with. Now that's kind of difficult to understand. And when we spray these things, why don't the pests go away? So that's that's the difficult part about it. Now, the beer game uh, can be can be quite simple and can be um, reasonably complicated. The simplest one I uh, saw was merely three players. We had the customer, the retailer, and the brewery. Now, the whole idea is that. Uh, we have a customer, he's been ordering two cases of beer, a particular variety of beer, an unusual variety of beer, uh, each week. So he comes in each week, he buys two cases of this, crates, crates of this beer, or cases, uh, cartons, uh, whatever term you want. He buys two cartons. And that's fine. It's been going on for some considerable time, and each, each, uh, each week the retailer happens to have two cartons of this beer available, and everything's very sweet. All right? However, one week, the customer comes in, and he wants four cartons of beer, same beer. Now, the retailer doesn't have it, so he's able to sell the two cartons he does have, and then he places a back order on the brewer for um, two more cartons, plus the two cartons he normally would order, plus the extra two, two cartons he expects to sell next week. So he's placed an order for six cartons. Okay, that's fine. What does he do next week? Well, that becomes an interesting story. Um, now, essential in this game is that the brewery can't react as fast as the uh, retailer can. The MIT game, when it was invented, it was invented by uh, several MIT professors to illustrate the problems of supply chain management. And these problems were um, they, they were endemic. You can see them in almost any supply chain. And uh, they wanted to show uh, how they happened, because uh, they knew, but it was very difficult to try and explain to uh, people in the supply chain 
what was going on and why it was happening and why they seemed to be powerless to stop it. Uh, in this supply chain, uh, instead of just the, um, the customer, the retailer and the brewery, here in the MIT version we have the customer, the retailer, the wholesaler, the distributor and the brewery. The essential element of the game is that there are delays between each of the partners. So um, the, um, the retailer would order from the wholesaler. Now that order can't be satisfied instantaneously. There might be a week or two weeks before the wholesaler can respond to that particular order. Same between the wholesaler and the distributor. There's a delay between the wholesaler and the distributor. And there's definitely a delay between the distributor and the brewery. I mean, the brewery isn't able to suddenly make beer that quickly. It takes something like, say, eight weeks to increase its production. So, with all these delays in the system, it takes some considerable time for a change in the ordering to work its way all the way through the system. Now, you can see there in that uh, particular diagram a, a, a diagram of the system. What's missing is the customer on the end. Uh, but you can see there the flow of um, the four partners in it. Now, orders flow from the retailer up through to the factory, the brewery, and product flows in the other direction. So that, that's the essential part of the, uh, the beer game. Now, the structural setup, orders flow upstream, deliveries flow downstream in the supply chain. The important aspect is the uh, delay between each of the um, each of the stages in the uh, supply chain. Um, and the structural setup is represented by two shipping delay fields located between the supply chain stages as well as the production end. So we have some delays in there. All right, so that's the structural setup. Now the essential rules, uh, because this, is, this game is a simulation game, it's played in a classroom. The essential rules, every order has to be fulfilled either directly should the player's inventory be large enough, or later in subsequent rounds. In other words, you either, you either supply the product out of your stock, or you back order it. Inventory and backlog incur a cost. If you have an, if you have it in inventory, and you're storing it in inventory, it costs you half a dollar. If you have to back order it, it costs you one dollar. Right? So the, the, the cost of having to back order is twice the cost of storage. So in theory, it would be um, uh, wise for you to store more than you think you might sell because it costs you less to store it than it does to back order it. Now the primary aim of this game is to uh, satisfy the orders and to keep your costs as low as possible. Now, this, in, in this simulation, it's not, a, it's not a game in which you can profit, it's a game in which you minimize your losses. All right, So we measure your success on, on um, how well you manage con to contain your losses. Now, players are not allowed to communicate other than by placing orders and delivering products. So they can't have a huddle between them all and say, well, here's what we're going to do. And we can't, um, we, we can't uh, place an order with our supplier and say, oh, look, I'm ordering this, but next week I expect to order this much and that much and something else. No, you can't do that. All you're able to do, pretty much as you are in life, is to say, I'm ordering this many cartons of beer. Okay? That's an essential part of the game. Um, partly, partly because it gets the, um, gets the desired thing. Now, the, uh, the setup we've got, uh, usually you set the, the system up where uh, there's inventory all through the thing. So the brewery has some stock on hand, the uh, distributor has some stock on hand, the wholesaler has some stock on hand, and the retailer has some stock on hand. You, you normally set it up like that. Now, the, uh, the easiest way to get the effect is when the retailer has only the stock on hand that the customer wants to buy. Okay, so if the customer wants to buy five cartons, then the retailer has five cartons on hand. That's probably not a bad way to start it all off. In order to produce the expected effect, the external demand remains stable for a couple of rounds, uh, possibly three rounds. This is so that everybody can learn the game and place the orders and get accustomed to what goes on and, and everybody can figure it all out. But at the end of about, say, three rounds, 
the customer increases their order. So instead of ordering five cartons of beer, they might order eight cartons of beer or ten cartons of beer. It doesn't matter what it is, but they increase their order. And having increased it, they keep it at that increased level. You could possibly later get all funny and, and you know, have the uh, customer increase up and down, play around, but it's not necessary uh, in order to demonstrate this thing. It's, it's better if there's a simple change in the order and stays that way because then everybody can see, gee, but the change wasn't that hard, but look at all the side effects that go on. So that's the whole idea. You start the game off, you get it stabilized, you then change the customer order, and then run it through. Now what will happen, because uh, this happened in every case, is that after about uh, say five or six rounds with the increased order, you get this bull whip effect where having had a lot of back ordered items, suddenly it starts catching up. But it's not, it's not only um, the back ordered items, there is a, suddenly an excess of product comes down the stream and you get this oversupply uh, going on. And then everybody cuts back because, man, we're oversupplied, we don't need to back order anymore. Not only do we not need to back order, we don't need to order anything anymore. And that goes the other way. And then, after a few more rounds, um, the stocks have gone right down and we're unable to supply. Um, then it all starts ramping up again. We start putting in more back orders and that catches up. And then in a few weeks time, we get this whole wave of product come down, uh, satisfying the orders or the back orders and overstocking again. And it goes up and down, like, uh, as I said, like a bull whip. Uh, this is delayed reaction then suddenly a lot happens. Now that, you can see there in that graph, um, it uh, is, becomes evident. The inventory fluctuation uh, is reflected in the, the amount of um, stock on hand. And you can see there in that graph, this is a fairly typical uh, scenario. Initially, we have some stock. Um, as we try to satisfy orders, the stock disappears out of the supply chain and essentially goes negative. And then it increases, and it, it increases uh, much more than it was in the first place. So there's an oversupply. And then it goes down again, and then it goes up again, and then it goes down again. Now, people who played the game, um, there's a fairly common observation that the students who play the game, uh, when they get through, they feel very frustrated that the system seems to be out of control. They don't understand what's going on, and they don't understand what to do. And it's a, apparently it can be an extremely frustrating you know, game to play uh, until you start learning what to do. Now, to what should have happened, the, um, what does happen, what should have happened. What tends to happen is that people order the uh, what they what they should do is they should order what they expect to sell next week. They back order what they haven't been able to sell this week and then they order what they expect to sell next week. And that's all they should do. But what in fact happens is that uh, people tend to order how much the customer is outstanding. So they've suddenly ordered not only what the customer wants, but everything the customer has, uh, everything we've already back ordered. So we tend to be ordering it twice, basically. And that's the problem. We don't keep track of uh, what's going on. We keep concentrating on, on, on the past instead of looking at the future. So that's the beer game. Uh, it was uh, invented by the MIT professors, and it's um, fairly, uh, fairly robust. It demonstrates the effect very, very well. It demonstrates the actions of systems. It demonstrates the, the um, consequences of second, second and third order effects in a system and shows why systems are just so difficult to control.